I said earlier today is Miser Mis Misericordia Domini, excuse me, a title taken from our intro. It. But today is also known, if you listen to the readings, it is also known as Good Shepherd Sunday, which is why that's the image that you see on the front of your worship folder. Today is Easter 3, and that is why we still are wearing white, and we're still saying, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And on Good Shepherd Sunday, you are reminded that the Good Shepherd is like David of old. He is proficient with a slingshot, protecting you from lions and bears. And that the Good Shepherd takes care of his sheep, even going so far as restoring the soul. That the Good Shepherd knows the topography of the land as well so that he can lead you to the nicest of green pastures and the coolest of still waters. So the admonition for us all is to stick with this good shepherd instead of those hirelings, instead of those day laborers who flee at the first sign of stress, at the first sign of danger who flee when the sun is out and just a bead of sweat begins to form on their head. Stick with this good shepherd and you will be set. However, there's something else about this good shepherd and we don't like hearing about it. This good shepherd disciplines you. Me? Why would the Good Shepherd need to discipline me? Well, as we heard, or as Isaiah says, he says, we all like sheep have gone astray. Or maybe as the hymn you might recall, prone, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. You, like sheep, habitually kick each other. Like sheep, you habitually butt heads with others for who knows what reason. You, like sheep, love to eat poisonous weeds. You, like sheep, even bite the hand of the Good Shepherd from time to time as he examines to make sure that all is well. You, like sheep, go so far as to run away from the protective eye of the Good Shepherd and you do so on purpose, <coughs> running to where there are predators like coyotes and wolves and cougars and stray dogs. You, like sheep, are fine being, being in their vicinity. You tend to enjoy it, really, as the predators, of course, salivate and lick their lips. So what does your good shepherd do with such wayward sheep like us. He disciplines them. With what? Well, a staff seems to identify a shepherd as being a shepherd. That, of course, is the long, slender stick, often with a crook or a hook at the top. But the staff generally is not used for discipline. The staff is used to gently lift a newborn lamb and bring it to its mother if they've become separated. Staff is used to reach out and catch individual sheep, young or old, especially the timid, to draw them in close for examination. The staff is also used for guiding sheep either into a new path or some, through some gate or along dangerous and difficult routes. It's laid gently against the animal's side to reassure the sheep. Good Shepherd always carries a staff. But the rod, that's used for discipline. Now you can fact check me on this, but search Jesus is the Good Shepherd on Google. Not now, not now. Later, you search for that 
and you will find countless images of Jesus carrying a staff. But none of them have him carrying a rod. Beloved, no shepherd, certainly not a good shepherd, would ever be without the rod. Now, I was looking through some, some boxes to, find, to try to find this, and maybe next year I'll have it uh, pegged. I have it in my, in my stack of stuff, so to speak, to give you an idea of what a rod looks like. I have what's known as a, it's called a knob carry. And it's what an African, not a Middle Eastern, but an African shepherd would use to discipline the sheep. I received it from a missionary in Africa many years ago. It's about this long. You may have seen one before if you're watching like a, a nature show or, or something on uh, folks in Africa. And there's a, there's a knob right there. It's a root. And they polish it down and it's black. It's a knob and then it's very slender like that. And boy, I tell you what. <laughs> that'll rattle somebody's head right there. Now, why do I say all of that? Because the good shepherd... Well, the Good Shepherd's been disciplining us as a church really all across the country. And he did so with a disease, with a pandemic. And that came to believers and unbelievers alike, aiming at something different with each group. In afflicting the unbeliever, disease and pandemic and fear are intended to awaken one from his deep sleep of sin and let them see that there is death on the horizon for all of us. We've talked about this before. Mento mori. Remember that you will surely die. And so to acknowledge the sin, let them feel it in their conscience and confess those sins before God with a contrite heart. Quarantine, as you recall, it's all vivid in our mind. It, it limited our mobility and activity. I still see this when I go into any type of convenience store and grocery store. People are still standing six, six feet away from each other. That was new for us. We even had stickers on the floor like we were all kindergartners. There's a sticker. Stand on the sticker. Now I go into convenience stores and I get right up behind the person. Just right. I want them to feel my breath on them on the back of their neck. Like, hey, how's it going? Good. <laughs> you think I'm kidding. I do. But quarantine did that. It limited mobility, activity, distance, all of that. But it was designed to really by the Lord to force the lost to meditate upon their sinful corruption and their hell-bound life. Now, I don't know droves and droves of people came to Christ as a result of the pandemic and the, and the uh, quarantine, but I know the Lord used it to discipline us. All of it was the rod, the rod of the Good Shepherd, so that the unbeliever might turn from his ways, attain a broken spirit and a contrite heart, and turn to God in genuine repentance. But with believers, with his dear children in Christ, God aims at a different objective. He still uses the rod. For them, it was not punishment, but a wholesome chastisement, a means of training for the purpose of keeping his sheep in his word and keeping them around his sacraments keeping them in repentance, in faith, and about a new obedience. When I was in Kansas, I mean, we, we lived, our church was in the shadow of the state capitol. So when the governor said, do not hold services with more than 10 people, most of our churches did what? Shut her down for two weeks that turned into two years. We worked very hard to try to keep our church doors open, and we did. We never shut down. We tried to keep it right to the letter, right to the letter, exactly what the governor was requesting. That did a lot of things to a lot of people. A lot of people said what? Even here. I wasn't in Hickory at the time. I didn't know what was going on here, but what did a lot of people do during that chastisement? They said, you know what? Better play it safe. 
no church for us. And then that developed a new habit, now didn't it? And then two weeks, and then it, then it was like a guy who said to me in Kansas, he's like, Pastor, it was really nice waking up with my wife on Sunday morning and I would read the paper and we would both drink coffee. It was great. And then we dropped out of church for two years, three years, four years. It was a chastisement for us all, a, a, tra a means of, of training. For we Christians, we still wrestle with the old man, the sinful, corrupted nature with its fruits, the actual sins and desires and thoughts, words and deeds, which still cling to us like cat hair on a black shirt. Believe me, I know a lot about cat hair on black shirts. <laughs> Therefore, when the Christian relaxes in this struggle for a time, he becomes slothful and cold in offering his praise and his thanks, offering his thanksgiving for all of the benefits and the blessings that God provides. He's no longer possessed of the same earnestness and zeal to hear and to learn, to read and to meditate upon the Word of God and thereby to increase in the blessed knowledge of God so as to obtain a clearer understanding of divine things, sin stealthily and gradually creeps into the heart just like, like a bias. Beloved, the rod of God is being used against us right now. And it's because we feel quite at home and quite at ease here below. Strangers and pilgrims on earth, are you kidding me? Not us, we kind of like it here. Hoping that it never ends. And this, my fellow sheep, is a, state, is a dangerous state to remain in. So, what does our Good Shepherd do? Will our Good Shepherd let us continue in our waywardness? To our detriment? Absolutely not. He comes to the sheep, the one he gave his life for, remember, and he brings the rod. To what end? Repentance toward God. Showing the fleetingness and the nothingness of temporal goods. To cause hatred of our besetting sins. To show us how slothful we are and how that is disgusting. And for you to acknowledge your unfaithfulness in governing your home, in bringing up your children, and in your proneness towards bitterness, anger, and gossip. Beloved, I'm not using the rod on you right now. Your good shepherd is. Using it to teach you, to strengthen you, and to make you sound in the one true faith so that your old man will be killed more and more and your new man will live more and more instead. <coughs> you know, I've read, there's a wonderful book, evangelical guy wrote it, but it's a wonderful little book. It's called A Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23. I believe his name is Peter Keller. And I read in that book one time years ago that sheep are so stubborn that they need more than just a rattling of the head with the rod. And so what does the good shepherd do to his sheep? He hits their legs and he breaks one of their legs on purpose. I mean, you see that image on the front of your worship folder, and you've seen it many, many times before, of a little lamb around Jesus' neck. What has the Good Shepherd just done? He's just broken one of the legs of a sheep that likes to do what? Wander away. He breaks the leg and he mends the leg. He's, the folk, he's not going on an airplane ride, just seeing those people that do the, 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 the pillow around their neck so their head doesn't bobble around. He just has broken the leg and he puts it on his shoulders around his neck. He breaks the leg and he mends the leg to teach and to train the little sheep. Don't get away from me. Bad things happen out there that you won't see coming. Stay close to me. And why does he do that? Because he's a good shepherd. 
And he loves the sheep. He died for the sheep, remember? He died for these same wayward, stubborn sheep, and then he carries the sheep, as I say, to teach it that you are the safest, you are the healthiest, and you are far better off when you are with the good shepherd. Beloved, maybe we're not experiencing the rod of the good shepherd. Maybe he's used that on us before. Maybe he's broken our legs. Regardless, might we all learn the lesson of depending upon and staying close to our good shepherd. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We rise for the offer.